What's going on guys? It's your boy Disticoder and welcome back to another episode of the YugiTuber Ruling Quiz. Today we have another fresh new face that we've never seen on the channel before. The one, the only, the legend, Lithium2300. How you doing my guy? Doing fine, yes, yes. It was a bit stressy but um, it works fine but I'm, I'm not, I told you just a couple of moments ago, I'm not sure that I'm going to get, what was it, five or six above yeah <laughs> i'm not too up to date with the rulings i mean hey if it makes you feel any better the last quiz that we had we had mbt on and he scored a whopping four out of eight so just to give you a little bit of an introduction on how this quiz goes i'm asking you eight ruling questions you can take all the time that you want when answering them and if you're a little bit stumped on one of the questions you do have two lifelines that you're allowed to use if you want a little bit of help so the two lifelines you can use are ask the judge the ask the judge lifeline basically allows you to ask me the head judge a ruling question or like something about like mechanics that you would typically be able to ask at a duel like at a YCS or something like that and the other lifeline that you have is ask the twitch chat if there's any question in which you're kind of stuck you're not too sure between two answers or something like that you can pull the twitch chat on whatever answer you like and then the twitch chat will vote on the answer that they feel is the most correct you don't have to go with the answer that the twitch chat votes for but you can ask the twitch chat if you're unsure sound good yeah okay let's go all right okay. so we have eight <laughs> questions lined up all for the monarch archetype which is the archetype that you are most well known for are you ready to get into this quiz with question number one yeah let's go all right, let's run it with question number one. So in this scenario, you control a Thestalos, the Firestorm Monarch that was previously Tribute Summon. You will tribute that Thestalos to Tribute Summon Thestalos, the Mega Monarch from your hand. At this point, you'll activate the effect of the Thestalos, the Mega Monarch, discarding a spell card from your opponent's hand here. How much damage is inflicted via the effect of Thestalos, the Mega Monarch? Um, hmm. the, the regular Testalo is it has been years from soul control. Uh, 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 and then if it was a monster card, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original level. Another. So uh, you, you discard the spell, so nothing? Or am I... I'm, I'm probably overlooking something. Mm. Um, nothing? No damage? Or no burn damage? No? Because you discarded Typhoon. It's not a monster card. Ah, but you attribute it to fire, so... Okay, so a thousand. Yeah, is that is that your final answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. Yeah. Final answer, 1,000 damage. Lithium, you are correct. You are inflicting 1,000 damage to your opponent here. And the reason why is because the also conjunction, as you apparently know, is that when you have an also conjunction, you do not need part A of the effect to successfully happen in order to perform part B. So in this situation, part A did not discard a monster, then this didn't do any burn damage from that part, but because you did tribute a fire monster, the second part of the also effect is still applied, inflicting a thousand damage to your opponent. You are one for one so far, off to a good start. You're doing well so far. Are you ready to run it with question number two? Yeah, let's uh, let's go. All right, let's get into question number two. You control a face-up March of the Monarchs, which makes all your tribute summon monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. Also, neither player can target them with card effects. You control a tribute summoned Grand Marg the Rock Monarch. It is your opponent's turn, and they are going to activate Book of Eclipse to flip your Grand Marg face down without targeting it. Afterwards, they activate Raigeki, attempting to destroy your Grand Marg. Is your Grand Marg, the Rock Monarch, destroyed in uh, this scenario? With, let's say, Domain. Uh, if your opponent puts the, the Tribute Summon monster face down, Domain is... I don't think Domain is in effect. Ooh, now I'm doubting. The thing is, is that does the monster remember it's being Tribute, or at least it was Tribute Summon during their turn? Ah, that's an issue on Tribute Summon monsters you control. I think they do. Um, that's, that, that sounds so strange because I, I've never had this actual sin, uh, scenario happen. Um, what's the most logical one? Like, imagine if the monster is put face down, does the domain still work? I I should know that. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> I think it's getting destroyed. Run me through your thought process here. Because it's not phase up anymore. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, is that I vaguely remember from like years ago, mm -hmm. like in certain situations, uh, monsters remember that they um, ah, like like how they were summoned or something like. I, I feel like what you're comparing this to is the um, Shadal Fusion Chain Book of Moon on like your Dante or something like that back in yeah, Shadal format or something along yeah, those something lines, right? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, my gut says it's going to be destroyed. Are we going with the gut? Yeah, I 
think I'm wrong, but... So li final, li fi final answer, it does get destroyed? I think so. Well, Lithium, unfortunately, you are incorrect in this scenario. Uh, Grand Mart okay. will not be destroyed here. And the reason why is because even though it was set face down by Book of Eclipse, it still remembers that it was a tribute summoned monster here. One for two, one correct, one incorrect. You're still doing perfectly fine. You are all good. Six more questions to go. And I believe that you can clutch it out for the rest. Are you ready to get into question number three? Let's all right, let's run it with question number three. Your opponent controls an Adea the Heavenly Squire and a Destru the Lost Rat Dragon's Frisson that summoned itself from the graveyard targeting your uh, well their own Adea. You control an Eidos, and here you're going to be tribute summoning your Rise of the Storm Monarch by tributing the Eidos. Your Ryza is then going to be activating its effect, targeting the opponent's Destrudo. In this situation, where does the Destrudo end up? Hmm. I think it's... It might work the same way as in, let's say, um, Dark Magician of Chaos, when it's like reborn, it hits the field, it's when it's like removed from the, uh, or, or, you know, let's say destroyed, uh, it's removed from the field in any situation, I think, or, or compost, for example. It doesn't mm -hmm. return to the hand, so it's removed. That's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, uh, I feel like you, you looked like you were uh, super confident, like, I absolutely yeah. know this one, and now you're doubting yourself. <laughs> so if I would follow the same thought process as you know with demok i think it should return to the bottom is yeah. that your final yeah. answer it goes to the yeah. bottom yeah. of the deck yeah let's go all right well lithium for question number three let's see if you are correct the riza will target the destrudo here using its own effect and the destrudo will be returned to the bottom of the deck you are correct yes okay. and the okay, reason okay. why the reasoning why here is that when a monster applies a restriction to itself for a location where it goes when it leaves the field that will always take precedence over any other card attempting to place it anywhere else because the riza here is attempting to put it on the top but the destrudo placed a restriction on itself that it goes to the bottom the destrudo's restriction is the one that takes precedent here over the Rise of the Storm Monarch. You are currently two for three. Five more questions to go. Are you ready to get into question number four? Yeah, let's go. You okay. feeling confident now? Two, two for three, uh, you feeling good? I was close with the other one, so yeah, okay, the confidence is still there. Let's run it with question number four. So in this scenario, you control a domain of the true monarchs, you have another domain in your hand, and an Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Here you will use the effect of the domain, revealing the Erebus in your hand to reduce its level by 2, making it a level 6 monster. After this, you will activate the other domain in your hand. Are you allowed to activate the domain to reduce the level of Erebus by another 2, and in turn, normal summon it as a level 4 monster without tributing? <clears throat> Like how like the, the how strange that it that this might sound. I have never done this, so <laughs> I don't think you can. I've been playing this the structure deck ever since 2016, and like like from from all the duels, I've never needed to do something like this. You can use the level <laughs> of your <laughs> because it it doesn't state um, that you need a tribute summon for it. I think you can it's solely based on the text. But I've never seen people do it. Like, like you know, normal uh, go for six, special summon Kuras, go for Beatrice, and s stuff like that. But make your monarch a normal summonable monster without tributing? I've. <laughs> uh, uh, th these questions are really, really good. Um, They're very nitpicky, that's for sure. Mm, 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 mm. I still have some, uh, you know, some potential help from the chat as well. You can but ask the chat. I'm, you can yeah, also ask I'm, something to me if you if you have a question that you feel like you want to ask. I'm going to keep it. Um, I okay. think you can reduce level of one monster by two. I think you can. Yeah, I think you can. Final answer, you can? Yeah, it, I think you can, even though it's probably not or never the, um, the, you know, the more optimal play. All right, well, Lithium, for question number four, you are correct. You are allowed oh, okay. to use the okay. domain to reduce the Erebus's level by two, making it a level four, and in turn, you can normal summon the Erebus from your hand without tributing. However, the funny part is that the Erebus's effect requires that it's tribute summoned in order to activate, so this really rarely comes up. It would only ever need to come up if, like I said, you're trying to push for game when your opponent has, like, nothing, and you just have two domain and an Erebus and you just want a normal summon a 2800 beater. So ladies and gentlemen, Lithium is currently 3 for 4 doing a really fantastic job. 4 
more questions to go. They only get harder where we're going. But hey, you can miss three of these and tie Joseph. So hey, we... <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to get into question number five? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's run it with question number five. So here you control an Eidos and an Adea. At this point, you are going to be tribute summoning your Zaborg, the Mega Monarch, by tributing both of those monsters. In this situation, you do not have any cards in your extra deck. Your opponent has eight cards in their extra deck. Can you activate the trigger effect of Zaborg, the Mega Monarch? And if so, how does it resolve? I think you can. I think so. Like, like it, it, it says, uh, if possible, I can't send any. But like, if my opponent has any um, amount of extra deck cards, I think he can or he has to. So I think he has to. So in this situation, you're saying that you are able to activate the effect of Zaborg and that it will loop out your opponent's extra deck? <laughs> ah. You said that with the utmost confidence. Um, I was so ready for to say yes, Kevin. Uh, yes, Coder. That is the answer. <laughs> the thing is, is that like like Domain never plays Zaborg. I think you can, just by going from the second sentence. I think, mm -hmm. like as possible. I think you can. All right. So the effect can be activated, and it will loop out the opponent's extra deck. Final answer. Yes. All right. Lithium. Once again, you are. Correct. You oh, not only sweet. can activate right. the effect of Zaborg, right. you must activate it because this effect is a mandatory effect. And in this situation, even though you have no cards in your extra deck, your opponent has eight of them, they will all be looped. So your opponent's going to be sending his sandwiches, he's going to be sending, you know, his laundry dragons and the double by dragon to the graveyard, and your Zaborg will fully resolve. You are currently four for five. Are you ready to get into question number six? Yep. Let's go. All right, let's run it with question number six. So in this situation, your opponent has no cards in their hand. The cards that you have in your hand are Rise of the Storm Monarch, Double Summon, Eidos, and Adea. In this situation, you're going to be normal summoning the Adea, using the effect of Adea to summon the Eidos from your deck, and then you're going to be using the effect of Eidos, which grants you an additional tribute summon for the turn. In this situation, after Eidos has resolved, you will activate the effect of Double Summon. After Double Summon resolves, how many more summons can you perform this turn? Uh, I think just one. They don't stack, if I remember correctly. You can conduct two normal summons this turn, not just one. Okay, 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 okay. I, st <coughs> I still think just one. I, I don't think these effects stack. Is that your final answer? You can perform one summon here? I think so. Lithium, you are unfortunately incorrect on this one. You can actually perform two summons here. And the reason why is because you had the good memory of some of certain additional normal summon effects do not stack, whereas others do stack. And the, the way you can tell the difference by these is that you have the effects that grant you an additional normal summon, like Eidos here, and then you have effects that increase the number of normal summons you can perform by a certain number, like double summon. Those two different kinds of effects do stack together because basically the way that it works is that typically you can only perform one normal summon per turn. Double summon says, no, you can perform two of them. And Ido says you can perform one additional one. Right, I was thinking of the brilliant fusion. That yeah, with Seraph the Knight. Summon, yeah. That doesn't work. All right, Lithium, we are four for six. Two more questions to go. You still held on to both your lifelines. Are you ready to get into question? Number seven. Yep. Let's All go. Right. Let's run it with question number seven. Here you have a Pantheism of the Monarchs in your graveyard. Your opponent has a Thunder King Ryo in their graveyard and a face down Call of the Haunted. In this situation, you'll activate the Pantheism of the Monarchs graveyard effect, banishing it from your graveyard in order to reveal three from your deck and add one of them to your hand. Your opponent is going to chain the Call of the Haunted here to special summon their Thunder King Ryo. In this situation, how does the effect of Pantheism of the Monarchs resolve? I, if I remember correctly, like in the uh, old school days, you were like maybe, let's say, Pot of Duality or something like that. And then your opponent chaining Call on Ryo. And then I think Pot of Duality fizzles, so you, you can't, you know, uh, add anything. You can't I say think. that word. You can't say that word. You can't yeah. say the F word. What? <laughs> I'm an old school player. Fair enough. <laughs> I, nobody adds. So the, the Call of the Haunted is chained on Thunder King. Mm -hmm. uh, Pantheism, I think, doesn't add. So you think it I doesn't think. reveal anything, it doesn't add anything, it just resolves without effect? <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> if this is true, ah, that's so so. I mean, hey, okay. you, you you seem you seem pretty confident in your answer. You're the one who knows best. You're um, the monarch god. <laughs> I I I don't I don't I don't think you at. But I followed my guts previously and I was wrong. But I think I'm going for it again. So it basically resolves that effect and pantheism does nothing. Final answer? Yeah, yeah, final answer. All right. Well, Lithium, you'll be happy to hear that you are once again correct. The pantheism will basically resolve without effect. And w w the thing that I found interesting was that you kind of went towards the pot of duality scenario, which the pot of duality scenario actually resolves differently than this. With pot okay. of duality, because it excavates rather than reveal and then the opponent chooses one, you would still excavate in this situation if they chained the call the haunted to your pot of duality. But the card that you choose to add from deck to hand with the pot of duality would actually be sent to the graveyard. But in this situation, ah. because pantheism doesn't excavate, it reveals in order to add, it's not able to do that under the Ryo. So in this situation, it resolves without effect. When you said duality, I was scared that you were going to remember <laughs> that, that weird duality scenario and be like... Oh, like it, it, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work like duality, and I was like, oh no, he's gonna go the wrong way with this. But hey, you uh, clutched yeah. it out in the end, and you got it right, <laughs> and you are currently five for seven. Still have both lifelines ready to go. Are you ready to get into the final question, question number eight? Yeah, let's go. Lost. All right, okay. let's run it with question number eight. You control a Mobius the Frost Monarch that was Tribute Summon. You also control a face up Monarchs Erupt and a face down Strike of the Monarchs. Your opponent controls a Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, a Mystical Space Typhoon face down, and a Defense Zone. Your opponent also has in their hand a Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. So in this situation, you okay. proceed from your main phase into your end phase. During your end phase, you are going to your opponent is going to be activating Mystical Space Typhoon, targeting your Monarchs Erupt. At this point, you are going to chain Strike of the Monarchs, sending your Mobius the Frost Monarch to the graveyard in order to negate your opponent's defense zone. In this situation, at which point? is the Monarchs Erupt sent to the graveyard, and on resolution of this chain, can your opponent activate the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon in their hand? Like, I've never played Strike, never. <laughs> never. Strike of the Monarch was a card that was uh, typically played yeah. in Draco rather than in Monarch, yeah, exactly. but it is a Monarch card by name, so yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, you know, call the, the help uh, from the chat. Oh, we are calling the chat. Okay, so in this situation, you are able to pull the Twitch chat for whatever answers you like. So I think Chainlink 2 is a spell. So the Monarch, at least the, the field spell, is going to get negated. Mystical Space Typhoon should be able to destroy the Erupt, if I'm not mistaken. So the, the final question should be or would be, are you able to drop the blue eyes card. You want to ask the chat specifically yeah. whether or not they can activate Jet? Yeah, exactly. Twitch chat, get ready to vote in the chat. The poll is now up. Can the opponent use the blue eyes Jet Dragon? One for yes, two for no. So right now the Twitch chat is 75% in favor of yes. Uh, now 27% in favor of no, it's fluctuating quite a bit. They're going between 70 to 75% in favor of yes, and uh, 25 to 30% in favor of no here. All right, I'm going to be ending the poll here. And the final result, uh, you have almost 100 people that say yes, and about 30 people that say no here. So I think the, the chat says you can destroy. Yeah, I think we can go for that. So yeah. your final answer here is that the chain would resolve as follows. Strike the Monarchs would negate the defense zone, draw you a card. Mystical Space Typhoon would destroy the Monarchs Erupt, and then after that, the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon is allowed to activate. I think so, but I'm probably overlooking something, but let's go. Yeah, I think so. Fair enough. All right, let's run it. With that being your final answer, let's see how it resolves. And um, unfortunately, Lithium, you are incorrect on the final question here. The answer here was actually that before the chain even begins resolving, the Monarch's Erupt will send itself to the graveyard because that effect that sends the Monarch's Erupt to the graveyard is not an activated effect. So the moment where you tribute away your Mobius the Frost Monarch using your Strike of the Monarch, after you've paid the cost of Strike, but before the chain even begins to resolve, the Monarch's Erupt will send itself to the graveyard here. So in the situation, the Strike of the Monarchs will negate 
negate the defense zone still. You'll draw a card. The Mystical Space Typhoon will not destroy the Monarch's Erupt because it's no longer on the field at that point. And in this situation, the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon cannot be activated. So unfortunately here, you end with a score of 5 out of 8. Not bad at all. You've tied okay. DC. Yeah. You beat out MBT. How do you feel about the quiz? Are you pretty satisfied with your score? Do you feel like you did well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, before I was like, I, I had like no clue what you could <laughs> ask or uh, but like like from all the, the 8 uh, questions, nope, none of them I would have guessed. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode of the YugiTuber Ruling Quiz. Let me know in the comment section below who you want to see on this series and with what deck you would like to see them quizzed with but that being said lithium thank you so much for hanging out thank you so much for taking this quiz and i'll see everyone in chat in the next video have a good one guys peace